When it comes to traditional medicine, many people still think that that is something we should leave behind and focus on modern medicine, inventing new drugs and medicines for treating different conditions. There are two funny things about this. Firstly, traditional medicine has been around for centuries, treating different kinds of diseases and conditions. And even though modern medicine doesn't want to give it some credit, they're still bringing back to life some of the oldest and somehow weirdest ways to treat conditions like leeches. And secondly, many pharmaceutical drugs are actually inspired or made by different compounds of plants that have been used in traditional medicine for thousands of years. Ashwagandha is one of the most well-known and used plants in Ayurveda, traditional Indian medicine, for a variety of purposes, including stress and anxiety reduction. And no, the benefits are not only anecdotal, they are also based on modern clinical trials. So what are those benefits of ashwagandha? Is it worth supplementing it? Are there any side effects? Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Greg and I'm a certified brain health professional. On this channel, we help professionals achieve peak brain performance. So if this interests you, then subscribe below and join our amazing community. Today, we are going all in about ashwagandha. We'll cover the benefits based on the current research, my experience with ashwagandha, what's the optimal dosage, if there are any possible side effects of taking it, and at the end, I'm going to tell you who is ashwagandha best for. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with ashwagandha, ashwagandha is the queen of Ayurvedic herbs. Its name means the smell of a horse, which applies to both the smell of the plant and the potential benefit to increase strength. In more modern terms, ashwagandha is known as one of the most well-researched adaptogen herbs. Adaptogens are natural substances like herbs that can help us adapt and manage stress better. We'll get back to the benefits of adaptogens a little bit later on. First, let's explain what happens when we are stressed and how adaptogens work to understand the potential benefits we can get from them. Now, when you're stressed, your body releases a stress hormone called cortisol, which helps you get your fight or flight response mode on. It helps you fight the perceived emergency or flight the potential danger. You know, running away as fast as we can when someone starts chewing in the middle of a family dinner. It's called misophonia, Bob. And yes, it's a real thing. Anyway, stressful situations from heavy workload, a lot of deadlines and meetings, to struggling to balance work and personal life and chewing, yes, chewing, impact us both physically and emotionally. And the problem with stress is that too much cortisol and too long fight or flight response mode turn on can compromise our immune system and lead to burnout, cardiovascular disease, chronic illnesses, anxiety, and even depression. So how can adaptogens like ashwagandha help? What are its benefits? Now, ashwagandha contains a high number of special compounds called witanolides that have a positive effect on different systems in our body. Now, in general, studies show that supplementing ashwagandha may decrease inflammation in the body and reduce the stress and symptoms of anxiety and even depression. It can also improve the quality of our sleep, lower blood pressure and blood sugar levels, as well as contribute to longevity while fighting off oxidative stress, often linked to many chronic diseases. The first well-known benefit of adaptogens, yes, ashwagandha included, is that it helps us cope with stress better. Now, the more a situation is stressful for us, the more cortisol our body is releasing and the more anxious and overwhelmed we feel. Ashwagandha reduces cortisol levels and helps us cope and resist stress for a longer period. And so it prevents exhaustion, which is often the side effect of too much stress. Now, the studies show that many benefits of ashwagandha are actually correlated with ashwagandha's ability to decrease inflammation in the body and also in the brain. Now, studies show that consistent inflammation in the brain, called neuroinflammation, is involved in experiencing symptoms of anxiety and depression. The biology behind this claim involves C-reactive protein, an inflammatory marker. Now, increasing levels of C-reactive protein are not only associated with an inflammatory response, but also with a higher risk for symptoms of anxiety and depression. In one specific clinical study, adults who experienced stress but were otherwise healthy supplemented 125 to 250 milligrams of ashwagandha for 60 days, and the results were very impressive. The results showed a significant reduction in C-reactive protein 
and anxiety symptoms in those who took ashwagandha compared to the placebo group. One interesting study also showed that 300 mg of ashwagandha taken for 60 days also improved the social functioning of individuals. Now, this shows promising benefits also for those with social anxiety. Now, because of the mentioned abilities of ashwagandha to decrease stress and anxiety symptoms, supplementing ashwagandha can also improve the quality of our sleep and shows promising benefits, especially for those dealing with insomnia. Now, some people also report better sleep if they take ashwagandha right before going to bed. As mentioned, stress affects us physically too. So ashwagandha, through decreasing stress, also decreases some of the physical symptoms of stress. Now studies especially show lower blood pressure and blood sugar levels in those supplementing ashwagandha. But how to properly take ashwagandha to get the desired results? First, let me tell you my experience with ashwagandha and the effects I noticed in myself. By the way guys, have you ever tried ashwagandha? And did you like it? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, I usually take ashwagandha in short periods. I take it for about one to three months, and then I stay off for about the same period. And that's how I can get the most out of ashwagandha and of course avoid any kind of side effects. Now, even my doctor, who is a doctor of Ayurvedic medicine, recommends exactly the same protocol. So three months on, three months off, and then you repeat the cycle if necessary. Now, usually I take 500 milligrams of ashwagandha per day. I take it in the afternoon. Um, and this is a KSM 66 extract, so one of the best extracts available on the market. Here I have another one from Tropix Depot, and this is 300 milligrams, also a perfect dosage basically. Somewhere between 300 to 500 milligrams is what you should take per day. Now, personally, I don't feel any effects after I take one capsule, especially not in the first day after starting a new protocol, but in about a week or so, I tend to get calmer. And then in about two to three weeks, I kind of get the most out of it. I'm generally feeling much better. I'm in a better mood. I'm less anxious, less stressed and so on. And that's why it is important to take ashwagandha for a couple of weeks to really get the most out of it. Now, for me personally, I find ashwagandha one of the best and strongest nootropics on the market. But of course, you have to try it out to see how it works for you. Now, how about the optimal dosage of ashwagandha? Well, the optimal dosage that has been shown to be effective in the studies is 300 to 500 milligrams of ashwagandha root extract taken either with a meal or on an empty stomach. You can try it out to see what works the best for you. Now, one thing that I need to point out is that you can't expect totally chill wipes immediately after you take ashwagandha. Or can you? Well, not really. The thing with adaptogens is that in general, you need to consistently take them for at least a few days to start noticing the first results. Now, you may wonder now, okay, Greg, where can I find the best ashwagandha extract to get those results? Well, stay with me, we'll get to it in a minute. By the way, do you want to know how well does your brain perform? Go for a free assessment, link in the description below and get your brain performance score. But first, let's talk about the safety aspects of supplementing ashwagandha. Now, ashwagandha is safe for a majority of people. A review of 69 studies, including clinical trials, has shown that ashwagandha seems safe and also effective for managing different conditions, including stress and anxiety symptoms, as well as insomnia. But ashwagandha is not all sunshine and rainbows for all people. Even though there are not many side effects reported, there are still some people who experience gastrointestinal discomfort, diarrhea, or even sleepiness. Now, if you want to hear more about the possible side effects of ashwagandha that no one is telling you about, I've made another video just about this topic and you can watch it up here. How about the synergies with other nootropics and medicines? Well, first of all, I personally love combining ashwagandha with other adaptogen herbs, such as rhodiola rosea, bacopa monieri, and even panax ginseng. They all work synergistically, but they also have other mechanisms of action, so you do get more benefits if you combine them together. Now, if you take any kind of drugs or supplements regularly, it's good to talk to your doctor prior to starting with supplementing ashwagandha. This is especially important if you take sedatives, blood thinners, thyroid supplements, and drugs that suppress the immune system. Drugs for anxiety, high blood pressure, and diabetes, benzodiazepines, anticonvulsants, or barbiturates. Moreover, if you have any kind of thyroid issues, you should check with your doctor before supplementing ashwagandha, because it can also affect the functioning of the thyroid. 
By the way, guys, if you like this video, please press the like button below. Right before I tell you who should consider supplementing ashwagandha, let me tell you what you need to know about it before buying it. Obviously, not every ashwagandha extract on the market is of high quality. The best way to make sure you get the best extract is to buy it from a reputable brand. Or you can go for a standardized ashwagandha extract like this one here. This is KSM 66 or Sensoril is another great extract. Below, I put a link to my favorite ashwagandha extract that worked wonders for me. Now, my verdict. Ashwagandha is an adaptogen herb that is nowadays really gaining popularity. This doesn't seem strange though, because of its powerful benefits to help us cope with everyday stress and anxiety, or help us improve our sleep, to be well rested and perform better the next day. So, is it worth supplementing ashwagandha? Based on my opinion, and based on the research we've done, I definitely recommend supplementing it, especially if you want to decrease anxiety and if you want to improve your general well-being. It is great for most active individuals who work 50 plus hours per week, are often stressed and would like to feel calmer and to be in a better mood. Now scroll down in the description of this video where you can find my favorite nootropic stack with ashwagandha and my favorite ashwagandha extract. And if you really care about your well-being, I definitely recommend combining ashwagandha with rhodiola rosea. Why exactly? Well, watch my next video on rhodiola up here. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you soon again. Stay well.